Um, uh, thanks. I'm, I haven't acquired the uh, skills of some of the academics of uh, speaking without notes, so I will uh, use some notes. <clears throat> um, okay, the power of envisioning uh, uh, is uh, envisioning, uh, to, it frees our mind of where we're at with the uh, many nations. Uh, in, in states of war with each other over resources normally, with human population growth, and an ecological footprint that is way beyond the carrying capacity as measured in biocapacity. <clears throat> and there are other measurements that we're not even using yet or not looking at. So, um, Danala Meadows, uh, I once gave a talk at one of these conferences actually uh, a bunch of years ago about envisioning, the power of envisioning, but I haven't seen too much in, in, on that subject uh, since, but I think it's extremely important because you need to know where you're going before you start out on the trip. And later on, I'll be developing key coordinates for a map to do that. <clears throat> now, I was in the, uh, as I said, I'm a technologist and I've been in development of uh, all kinds of uh, various systems <clears throat> and automatic test equipment for airplanes and uh, systems on airplanes that uh, I was working on. And when you need to build something new, first of all, you have to have a reason for it. You have to assess what the reasons are for building a new model. Well, everybody's talked about a lot of reasons that we've got for building a new model of economics and the way of doing business and government. So um, there's no problem finding the, the problems. However, some of the problems that are really key are not really at the table today, um, at least not in, in a primary form, as part of the primary core issues. I talk about three core issues that are driving the human, uh, and the human economy and the human population over the cliff, so to speak. <clears throat> and uh, the next thing you have to do is, okay, so we've got these problems, so what do we do now about them? So uh, we have to look at key concepts that are well proven, we know how they work, that will fit in to replace these concepts that are um, they're the faults in the existing model. Uh, so that's what, one of the things we have to do. And then you have to do envisioning the whole functioning whole. You've got the new models, a lot of the old stuff is still working. Uh, the, uh, the, we need economics, we need law, we need civil order, we need uh, uh, farmers and we need all of the things that we have now, but there are only a few key items that we have to change to, to change the, the way we do things. And it, the result of the, the end of the, the talk, what I want to uh, deal with is a, an envisioned scenario 50 years after all of these things happened and get put into a sort of a boiling pot. This is what, and, and this is where we would like to be in 50 years using everything I've heard last night and today and, and at other ecological conferences. Uh, I have no, everything sort of would fit into this because I agree with everything I've heard. Um, but interdis interdisciplinary, and d d interdisciplinary is a very key uh, component of this because it's a multidisciplinary problem. And uh, envisioning the, uh, the functioning whole is, is, is that 50 year image that I'll be talking about. <clears throat> the key weakness of the existing model, well, um, of the multidisciplinary issues, we're talking about economics here mostly and environmental issues and concerns, but um, that's, only, that's only one of them, and so we've got to talk about uh, more of those. So <clears throat> the problem is we don't really talk about them all together in the same context. The, there are today uh, organizations like this for ecological economics, and then some people want to just change the existing uh, ownership of the money instead of the uh, uh, Federal Reserve being the key, which is a, a private corporation with a little bit of federal oversight, instead of they being the people who control the, bank, control the money supply and the money system, um, some people just want to bring that into the government level instead of the uh, this nonprofit Federal Reserve, which happens to be the world current, the world re finance reserve these days. Um, 
<clears throat> and then the population issues. Well, we really have a population issue. We've got about uh, uh, seven millions and it's ex go still growing exponential, but slowing, ex slowing exponential. So anybody can pretty well tell we've got more, uh, we've got a serious problem with population. So we have to bring that into the mix of things we're going to talk about. And in continuing to what I'm talking about, the, uh, there really isn't any forum that talks about all of these three, three things in one, in one window. So that's, that's what we're going to do today. And, and when, the, when you don't have them all in one page, nothing can really succeed. Um, because each of these things become a wicked problem, as the economist Giovann uh, learned back in 1800 when they were trying to solve the uh, pollution issue. They uh, thought they got more efficient systems to burn coal and it wouldn't pollute so much. Well, they burned more coal because he was only dealing with one end of the, uh, one end of the spectrum and uh, the economic drivers and population drivers were pushing the other part of the cart, so he had a problem. And uh, we know where we're going, uh, as predicted uh, back in 19, uh, about 1970 by the Club of Rome. You do keep do, people keep doing reviews of that, and uh, we're on target, just like they said. We're going downhill at a very fi fast rate of speed. I'm sure you've all, all seen this. Uh, uh, the uh, Smithsonian Institute recently did a, uh, uh, did a, recheck on that, check the numbers, check the evaluation, check where we were, and sure as heck, we're right on the same path. Uh, looks like we're going to have, have a hand cart in a few years, and when you look at global warming, and population still growing, economy, ec economics that's based, to, designed to grow, and, well, as everybody here is, is said, this is a bad model. When, uh, when we talk about uh, uh, changing the system to something that could work, we'll have to use the, the wisdom of the, uh, the Rothschild brothers because uh, human nature is a key part of, of what we need to deal with. The, uh, they said the few who understand the system will either be so interested from its profit or so dependent on its favors that there will be no opposition from that class. Now, that... Uh, that's uh, certainly true, and uh, we've discovered that um, uh, very many uh, states, such as uh, Quebec or, or province, they have a different set of cultural values, and they would like to be a separate state, look after things themselves more than they do because they're part of the federal government. But they, they don't. They had a vote, it was close, turned it down. People were unsure about their money system. Uh, where was my mo what, what about all the money I have in the bank? What if Canada won't, uh, won't uh, let, uh, let us use that? Um, and the same thing happened in Scotland, and even more, more recently. And then uh, it was very close to a, Scotland's going to separate, but they didn't. Greece had the same issue, but the big, the big stamp of the money system, the privately owned money system, the has a lot to do with running the governments. Uh, they had capitulated and uh, knuckled under and uh, we know what the state they're in today. So we need a lifeboat system of economics. Uh, we need to develop one. Let's not look at what we got today, look at what we want to have in the future and uh, call that a lifeboat system of economics that builds on all the things that we're talking about here. And, uh, uh, and if we have had that, it could be a director for organizations like this, or organizations about population, or regionalization organizations. And if we could get, if there was something that they could all be moving toward, we would, uh, we would know better how to take footsteps today. So in the dynamic system terms, um, money is a human, human created entity. 100% human created. We just decided we wanted money, and there's been a variety of types. Um, so we can we can change that, like David Suzuki said. 
build all these things, uh, abstract, react, abstract concepts is what uh, Gregory Betson <coughs> used to wrote about. I call them ad realities when I write about these things because they're human uh, created devices such as a ball game, uh, banks, and all of these things are things that we've built and we need to, uh, need to change the, the elements. Now this is a, I met Stafford Beer a few years ago in Toronto and we spent a couple of evenings together and communicated quite a bit. And he, he was a cybernetist and uh, he, uh, I think this, this uh, quote is worth repeating because we need to think about that. I'm proposing simply that uh, society should change its tools, redesign its institutions and operate those institutions quite differently. You can imagine all the problems, but first and gravest, problems in the mind screwed bound down by all of those cultural constraints. You will not need a lot of learning to understand what I'm saying. You will need intellectual freedom. It's a free gift to all have the courage to accept it. Remember, our culture teaches us intellectual, not intellectual courage, but intellectual conformity. <clears throat> so, step two, uh, explore new and proven contracts to supplant the old things that aren't working too well. The best such ideas, we need to look to the people that are controlling the world basically these days. Uh, the corporations, the corporations that run the banks, the corporations that run Monsanto, and all the multinational corporations. They've got a marvelous systems of uh, control. They, they measure this, the uh, road post along the way, they have measurement systems, they have feedback systems. If a measurement isn't right, they change a the manager and put the feedback in to make, make that uh, road marker on the road uh, come up to standard. Uh, and they have modular branches uh, administered by, a cent by central goals, but the branches are generally highly autonomous. They do all the things that they need to do except and the fo but follow the directives of the main corporation. And the overall goal of the whole system is that the corporation should make money. Well, uh, <clears throat> we need a governance system with an overall goal of sustainability. Uh, and we need sub-tier regions of the world to uh, agree to a certain number of fundamental principles, earth principles. And I'm working towards what I call blue planet governance. Um, which is I'll introduce a little later on, uh, which would be the nature of the system. I got particularly in, uh, involved with uh, multinational, multinational corporations as I was uh, an airworthy inspector for Transport Canada for a number of years, and I was uh, auditing the quality assurance systems for people like um, Boeing or uh, Allied Aerospace who make uh, avionic systems and uh, Doughty International and um, who make uh, undercarriage for airplanes like uh, Boeing 747s. So and I got quite familiar with the processes there because I was auditing their systems. So, and that is a marvelous system that we could use in governance. So envisioning the whole, um, is in blue I refer to blue planet governance as the overall operating system. 